daughter-in-law Sarah would become Sarah, his son Abram's wife, and his grandson Lot, his son Haran's daughter, Haran's child, and moved away from Ur of the Chaldeans and was headed for the land of Canaan. But they stopped at Haran and settled there. Terah lived for 205 years and died while he was still in Haran. I want to talk about from settling to success. From settling to success. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, tonight, uh, to shorten the introduction, we are introduced by, uh, to a man by the name of Terah. Terah was a descendant of Noah from the lineage of Sin, Shem. Terah was the father of Nahor, Abram, and Haran. The Bible records that Haran died. Terah was then responsible for the upbringing of his nephew, grandson, Lot. The Bible says that one day he took his son, Abram, and his wife, and his grandson, and set out from Ur to go to the land of Canaan. But that is as it is recorded, he did not quite make it to Canaan, but rather when he arrived to Haran, they settled there. He lived and he died. He left for Canaan. He arrived in Haran, but he settled there and he died. From Ur to Canaan is approximately 1,000 miles from her to Haran is about 600 miles and so he now is halfway to where he is, has decided to go but yet he decides to settle. And the danger, brothers and sisters, that many of us fall into is settling in a place in life that we didn't plan on staying. Uh, brothers and sisters, and I believe, brothers and sisters, that I have some people in this room who has made up in your mind, in spite of the trials, in spite of the circumstances that you find yourself in in life, you have made up in your mind that I'm not going to settle. three things in order for you to shift from uh, settling to success. Um, the first thing that he teaches us, Terah teaches us, that if we want to shift uh, from settling to success, number one, we must overcome compromising principles. We must overcome compromising principle because when you look at the city of Haran and even uh, Haran and even the city of Ur, what you will discover is that that city was a major city of worshiping the moon god sign. When you look and you discover and begin to study the city, what you will discover is this city was really, it was prosperous and they were doing well, but all their downfall, they were a city who were in idol worship. They were in idol worship. And I believe by study of the text and believe by study of the Bible, what you will discover is one of the reasons uh, that Terah settled for something less than his best was because he got caught up in the principle 
principles of the people around him. And brothers and sisters, if you want to be what God desires you to be, and if you want to go what God desires to take you, you cannot get caught up in what everybody else is doing. Cannot get caught up in what everybody else is doing. And even when you look at the book of Joshua, when you look at the book of Joshua, Joshua, when he is giving his farewell speech and he's talking to the children of Israel, he brings up Terah's name. He brings up Terah's name in the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 1 and 2. He tells them, Joshua summoned all the tribes and all the leaders of the people of Israel. Including Shechem, the elders, the leaders, the judges, and the officers. And they came and presented themselves to God. And Joshua said to the people, this is what the Lord God of Israel says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River. And they worshipped other gods. I believe once he got to Haran, uh, he got more concerned with his pleasure than the promise. Uh, I believe he got more caught up in his lust than what he had on the inside of him. And brothers and sisters, if you are not careful, you can allow your flesh to make decisions that your mind and your spirit is going and he too begins to fall into idol worship and he forgets about where he was headed. Ah, ah, it's Friday night. We ain't got to be the church crowd tonight. That's on Sunday. How many of you can be honest to the fact that there have been times in your life where you have drifted from your vision and your dream and got caught up in what brought you ah, right now pleasure and the Nassus, the early bishop of Alexandria uh, was a, uh, a stout uh, a priest and opposed bishop who opposed the teachings of Arius who declared that Christ was not the eternal son of God he goes through five exiles and while is finally summoned before the emperor Theodosius who demanded that he cease his opposition of Arius. Theodosius looked at him and said, do you not realize that the whole world is against you? Uh, Anthonisius looked at him and said, uh, well, frankly, that must mean that I'm against the world. In other words, there are times when you have destiny on your mind, you don't mind being all by yourself. The whole world can be saying the sky is red, but when you know what you know what you know, and when you know who you belong to, you don't mind being by yourself. They had a whole song when I was growing up. Church. We want everybody to go with us, but the bad news is about destiny is everybody can't go with you. So he decides to stay uh, in a place that is less than where he wants to go. And so if you want to shift from settling uh, to success, you've got to make sure that you overcome compromising principles. Number two, uh, what J. Rod teaches us is that you must overpower copious possessions. You must overpower copious possessions. Let me drink and I'll let you think it. must overpower copious possession. Uh, what you learn 
from Abram in Genesis chapter 12 and what you learn from his family including Terah is by the time he settles in Haran and time goes on what you will discover is that they were not broke in Haran they, they were not broke in Haran in fact they had gained a lot of wealth and possessions yes. and the problem with us the reason we settle for less and settle for a place that we did not intend on staying is because it's hard to leave the familiar when the familiar is financed
pastors and the reason many of us cannot ship and the meaning and the reason many of us have settled in a place where we know God doesn't want us to stay is because we have traded in better for better off. Oh, help me, Jesus. We've traded off better for better off. I'm doing all right right now. Now's not the time to really shake the boat and rock the boat. But I ain't come to tell you, if you really want to be successful, there are times you have to trade better off because you see better in your future. Look at your neighbor and say, excuse me, but I see better in my future. I see better in my future. Come on, give me see shot. I see better in my future. And so, where I am now may be a good place. But why do I have to stay in a good place when God What you will discover is, is that Abraham, he made up in his mind that although my father let me there, I cannot stay here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, your father let me there. But the text says that you've got to obey a compelling proclamation. Because what God told Abraham, he says, I want you to get away from your father's house. And I want you to go to a land that I'll show you. And if you're willing to go, I will make your name great. And the Bible says that Abraham obeyed the Lord and he went not knowing where he was going. In other words, he obeyed God and the rest was history. Yeah. 